they um, implement some kind of transaction system in order to uh, minimize the risk of the system going and uh, breaking completely should the process be installed in uh, one package with all the dependencies stop. Right? Or that and, um, but that is really a bit fragile because it's really not possible to do atomic installations of packages. Um, yeah, some do some build that from source, uh, but in the end, you just they just have a binary version and install that. And there are function, so-called functional package management solutions, which um, basically they install packages. Each package is being installed into a folder um, of its own, and then. They uh, get the whole thing working by either um, putting link farms in the standard folders, bin, lib, and stuff. So they can they activate concrete versions of each package. And so, well, single install is a similar thing in the user home directory, and it does that to environment variables. It just activates some packages. Um, and Cause one package to be able to find the proper libraries by uh, that implementers. And still, um, yeah, that's pretty much what is out there. And there are other experimental results that we can do to that. And that. <coughs> Central one provided by us, 
Uh, or by hiding calls, and it will contain the basis of the Yeah. Uh, a bit of the environment. Um, there usually is um, some local database of what packages are in store, so the package management can work with that. Um, yeah. we, we think we will mostly do it on the fly, just look what packages are there. We have our data base. We are mostly, of course, we probably will have one pilot that uh, says which package is really activated. I uh, will tell you about it more later. Um, and uh, all package management solutions have some kind of package manager app that does the installation, the installation, and updates uh, packages. And of course, does the dependency resolutions for and installs um, depending. Um, there are also uh, some features uh, of Microsoft package management to decide on, which are in the uh, One thing is we have uh, three different installation locations. Um, there is one compass, one is system, the a boot system, where the core system is installed. And it is usually not tempered by anyone who works with the system. Um, and there's boot common, which contains the uh, yeah, stuff that is globally installed for all users. That, uh, that is usually the way you would want to install the uh, software. And then there's uh, the config. Uh, config. When we go with user eventually, then there will be multiple uh, user uh, directories. And there also where software can also be installed. Um, and that's why that class two uh, comes where the class two comes from. A common home I also have um, a subdirectory with a full, uh, full uh, installation tree where the software can install that is not packaged at all. So we can build some stuff from the source and install it there right? without uh, needing to build a package and drop it. Uh, so that will still work. Just in different directions. Um, uh, we have a special package format. HPKG. Um, and it was designed to have quick access to, um, uh, to all the data that are contained. So we can uh, use the data on the fly without extracting them actually. And that's where HLS uh, comes in. It's a file system that mounts, uh, mounts packages, so to speak, let's say. Um, it virtually uh, unifies all package, uh, the, the contents of all packages that are installed. Um, and there are three instances of package that is mounted, one at the system, one at the system, and one at the system. And, uh, yeah, and each one contains the respective tree of the packages installed at that location. Yeah, um, I will go a bit into the details how um, the package management solution that works. These are the components that, uh, that it is made of. Uh, the core of it is, is the package field. It's an application program database um, that contains all the functionality, that provides all the functionality and needed for package management. Um, to the right, you see um, the support for the Haiku package method format. We have a reader that can read the format and look at it and write it afterwards. Um, and there's the, um, the API that deals with package installation, that deals with repositories, um, and there's a, um, a sub API for the, the dependency servers that resolves um, dependencies between packages. Uh, can find out what dependencies need to be installed or installed for a respective package. Um, the dependency solver uses an external library that is, solved, that is also used by Zilla for the And it's a, um, as Oliver found out, a very solid uh, library that does very good uh, dependency solver. That's why we use it. Um, yeah, um, we have uh, tools that, that work with uh, 
at the package file it's a tool that uh, creates packages and can extract them if necessary. Um, the package tool, the package repo tool is uh, a tool that um, builds repository index files that are needed on the repository side of the normal. Um, there's package this uh, up there. It doesn't really use the package kit because the package kit is a user uh, end API. It reuses some code of, uh, of the package reader because it obviously uh, must extract, visually extract uh, the package contents. There's the package manager, which also uses the package kit uh, API. It will be, uh, yeah. Since all the APIs and uh, since all the functionalities in the package kit or the basic functionality shouldn't be too complex and we will have two package manager one for the common line one for one the employee from the package manager for all the data. And uh, finally I didn't speak to the um, package manager demon. It's um, yeah, it's a demon process that is needed uh, Mostly for manual installation of the packages. Um, I think I will. Yeah, I will say something about it in a second. Yeah, for package installation, there are two methods. You can manually install the package. That means you just take the package file and drop it in one of the um, packages directories in one of the three installation locations. And there's the installation here by package manager. Um, and now a recall that I had an hands-on hands -on, uh, demo. Uh, for um, um, the system I'm, I'm using here is already um, a hypo with the package management. And the system itself is the package manager package. Um, and yeah, um, a lot of, of external product, uh, of external packages are also in the uh, package now. And yeah, let's see the system directory, just for example. Um, there's one uh, directory packages which contain all, contains all the package uh, files. In this case, it's the system that's not that much. Um, I don't know if you, if you can read it here. It's also only a few packages for uh, the cross system. It's one of the rather huge package, high uh, package, which is uh, 51 megabyte size. <coughs> this, this package contains the whole core system, uh, including kernel, bootloader, um, the libraries, the B, the translation, whatever. Um, the servers, the most of the you know, all of the applications that, that are in the repository itself, like styled, styled and so on. Um, and here the rest are either dependencies uh, like ICU. ICU is a separate package and Haiku, the Haiku system package depends on it. Uh, or other packages that complement the same as the Wildcom package. Uh, a user guide package, uh, some development package that contains LDCC and some of the build tools, and there's also a Debo package. And as you see, the Debo package, for instance, uh, lands, is virtually extracted here. And uh, yeah, previous work as well for, for package management. Um, I don't know. Search something and work it fast. Find the files that are in the packages. And you can also just restore the uh, package by removing it from the packages directory and it is installed. At least. And of course. <laughs> And it creates our smartphone. Can you question? Um, I think that's what I'm saying.